When you think of theater icons, you think of these two people, Jules Fisher and Peggy and Eisenhower, who have just won Best Lighting for Once on This Island. How many Tony Awards do you have between the two of you? Uh, nine. I think, I think there's nine. When I think theater, I think your names. Mm -hmm, that's sweet. Uh, I've been doing it a long time, half of my career with Peggy, and I still love doing it every day I go to work. What is the most humbling experience that you have had in your entire career? Humbling. Well, I guess seeing other people's brilliant work. I've seen the work of Abe Fader and Gene Rosenthal, and that's humbling. And when I see the work of solo artists like Peggy, it's humbling. Peggy, I would say it's easy for me. I, the most humbling aspect of, of my career has been being originally chosen by Jules to work with him so many years ago, 33 years ago, uh, as a kid. And uh, I always had a dream of, of meeting him, getting to know him. I went to Carnegie Mellon because he went there, and I met him there at 18. And um, it, it's still humbling to me today. And we're still doing it. Now, everybody has favorite children. What is your favorite child in terms of the thing that you, or the show, the play, the musical, the ballet, whatever, that you have lit? Oh, I would say one that we loved, had so much fun on, was Bring in the Noise, Bring in the Funk, which was very different for lighting for us. And that brought some elements of um, other forms of entertainment to it. That was one favorite. I would say any show that we did with George Wolfe <laughs> was one of my favorites. And I guess, personally, Hair and uh, Angels in America. What's next? Yeah. True. What's next for both of you? Well, we're floating some some offers on uh, the West Coast as well as it, for the theater um, season next season. So we're not at liberty to say just yet, but we're trying to work both sides of it. And do you have a show that you would like to have lit in or that you're looking forward to lighting at some point? Well, the, the next show with a great director and a, a play that something that Tony Kushner would write, I would do anything to do it. I would have to say, you know, once on this island, when we were approached about that show, the only thing that I could think of was, finally. <laughs> so that was one that was on my list for a really long time. One of the most unique theatrical performances and winner of this year's Drama Desk Award was Darren Brown's Secret. And unbeknownst to me, this was actually written by these two men. Well, it was written by us three and us. Darren. Yes, yeah. the three of us wrote it and the two of us directed it. Yeah, so Darren is at home uh, in England at the moment touring. Yes, he's so, working so he couldn't so be he here. he can't yeah. be here to enjoy this moment. Now, the show is more like a psychic experience than a mind reading experience, but I'm sure that you think differently. Explain. Um, well, it's not like a psychic experience, actually. I mean, it's like an, an extraordinary piece of theatre where Darren uses magic, psychology, waking hypnosis, Showmanship. Showmanship and mixes all of these things together into something that is uniquely his version of a magic show and, and it's, it's like nothing you've ever seen live. Well, the moment where he makes the drawing, yes, that's the most interesting part of the whole thing, at least I thought so. Yeah. Right, right, right. Yeah, well, the, this show, in fact, it's a combination of 18 years' work, the show you're seeing. In the UK, in the West End, he's done seven original, brand new, one-man, two-hour shows. And the show that you saw was like the best bits of that, taking our favourite parts, revamped into a new storyline, then put together. So that, yeah, that's a special moment. Don't, let's not give too much away, because the show will come back to New York, so we don't yeah. want to spoil it for people. Yeah? The other thing that's exciting for us is everyone that interviews us and everyone you speak to has their own version of what they're 
favorite yeah, most special yeah. moment is yeah. and what's interesting about that is it tends to tap into the things that touch you or you're interested in well i'm into art well there you go there you go and that's why for you that moment's so resonant whereas someone else it'll be something else or something else or something else what is your favorite moment oh my favorite moment is i mean i love all of them and i'm really proud because the three of us there were all things that we kind of created together for me my favorite favorite moment is the very end of act one which i'm not talking about and the very end of act two which i'm not talking about but those two buttons and for me it's the very start of the show where he just sits on a chair and tells you about his life and how he came to do what he does and opens up in a very personal real way every night and when can we see this again so the show will come back we're hoping to broadway this fall or next spring oh so you're going to come to broadway yes we are and you heard it here for her remarkable costumes for My Fair Lady, we have Catherine Zuber. Catherine, what has been the most humbling experience in your entire career? Um, I think the most humbling experience would be um, that um, after uh, we have worked on a production, when you get feedback from people that have seen it and they will stop you and say that how much they enjoyed a production, and they mean the entire production, they mean the direction and the actors, the design, everything. That is so humbling to know that, you know, that we're all part of a team working together. Now, up until last year, you were always the pony that was nominated, but now you're winning. What does that feel like to now be on a winning streak? Um, it's wonderful to feel that I'm being asked to do projects that are so exciting and uh, with wonderful collaborators. It's just great. And what advice would you give to young costume designers? Uh, to be true to your uh, your own voice and not to try to imitate someone else, to um, find your voice and be proud of it and stick with it.